A city is the way we think that we should live together. And a city is a kind of social agreement about how to live together. Yeah, there is this question of the form of the city, but also the material and the process and how we feed ourselves, how we produce our energy, and this is fundamental. You have a new model of city every 35 to 50 years. But now innovation arrive very fast to the sober wall. You have a new cell phone every year, you have a new car every five years. So that means that after the digital revolution, internet has changed our life, but didn't change our city yet. This place is called Baidaura, Baidaura Labs. So 10 years ago, we decided to find a place where we could not only design things and fabricate, but to demonstrate that self-sufficiency is possible. Now is the moment where we take all the innovation coming from internet and we apply to the cities in a massive way. This is the so-called Catalan vaults. Someone now developed a software to make parametric vaults. The difference between this parametric vault and the traditional symmetrical vaults is the difference between a box wooden tiny house and this parametric wooden house because we use software and we like to use computation to make a house that is more similar to the nature that we have around. We love Benoit Mandelbrot was the inventor of the fractal numbers. And he said that the traditional modern architecture was based in cubes, sphere, and rational forms. But then Mandelbrot wrote that book about the fractal numbers. This was a fundamental book also to develop many software that we use now to do renderings and animations and so on. This is a form connected with these fractal numbers. And he said that a tree is a rational form, but it's not Euclidean, so that means it's not linear, it's parametric, and like a cloud or like this building. So that's why today now buildings can be more connected with nature, but not only in a formalistic way. In this case, it's also, I mean, the tree was coming just from there. We were cutting some trees, and this will be the wood that will be used for our biomass plant. So with this wood, will be heating the house. So that means that with our wood, we produce energy, and also we produce our buildings. <laughs> 30 years ago, I was inspired by Taliesi. I find you right that he make a community with a student where they were learning by doing. But in this case, we want to do learning by living. So here, this is the old farmhouse that now is the headquarters of our labs. The students are taking wood for their experiments. Our students is living up here because this is a community. We did a restoration trying to keep the textures of the history, the degradation somehow, but now students are living here for 11 months. We like the idea that the students should live following the principles that they want to apply to the cities to come. So that means that if we imagine that the citizens in the future should be more productive, we should produce our own energy. We should produce also, we should build things. Cities should produce food. So it is your responsibility to look after this piece of land. Now in one teaspoon, there's a whole world of humanity. There's a whole world of microorganisms.
It has been a long time since I've tried to sow carrots inside the bulge. And then we cover it all with straw. If you want to be self-sufficient, you need to produce three things. I know. You need to produce food. So here the students produce food. We need to produce it still more. You need to produce energy. So with our trees, we produce chips. And then we produce energy with the biomass and with some solar panels. And then we are producing structures, buildings, houses with our own material. So in the limit, a city that is able to produce food, energy and things, then will become self-sufficient. What is incredible is that we, by living here, we discovered this connection of, we have here the raw material, this is the first sector. We have the machine to do the industrial transformation, this is the second sector. And we have the designers and the tools to produce things. This is the third sector. This is the so-called Green Fab Lab. We are part of the global network of Fab Lab. We were one of the early Fab Lab, the first Fab Lab in Europe. And here we wanted to do a place where we connect with the nature. Here they are testing different earth, composition of earth and mixing with other materials. We are incubating some people. They are developing drones for reforestation. Drop the seeds and here they are doing a machine in order to test different configurations of seeds and they can see which minerals they put around the seeds are better. And here they are cutting the wood with a laser cutter in order to develop the model. And this is the future of cities. So that's why last year we took all our students and we say, we have four months to make a building, should be a self-sufficient building, disconnected from the network, producing their own energy, capturing water, and we should build it using the wood that we cut in winter. And outside the wood is oak, and this is oak from Baidaura. This is Baidaura oaks. Yeah, you see? This all came from your... Yeah, from our property. So it's zero kilometer tiny house. You know, the wood that we have around used to be an agriculture land. Here there is a fountain that was done in the 1892. Yeah, down there, there is mines and the wells in the same age that they were doing these walls. But all of these, what you see is how we can abandon places and you see kind of archaeology of the 19th century. All of these were, were vineyards, there were no trees. But then the problem is that there was a disease, the phylloxera, that killed all the grapes. And then that's why we have a forest. But I would say that you see all of these and all these pines, uh -huh. they, came, they grow because agriculture was abandoned. And sometimes people in cities think that the best way to protect the nature is not to touch it. But this is not exactly as it works. The best place where you have more biodiversity, for, for example, is near the fountain that has been done by the men and where the water is concentrated. Many times biodiversity is the product of the action of the men. You know, this forest is abandoned because no one is taking care of it. It has 40% of excess of biomass. But that one, yes. So we should be removing some trunks and some trees. And so those two trees, we're keeping those. Now, if we wanted to, we could cut down all of those encinas yep. and plant anew. Mm -hmm. But we're keeping them because it's a nice, well-developed forest <laughs> of oak. And then up here, we've chosen four pines. Four pines that we want, only because they are... Fat and straight. And this is not about deforestation. We are going to do some selective cut. 
if we don't cut it, it will burn. Yeah, that's the first one that's cut. So that means that the forest needs to be managed. <laughs> so the students, we had to select trees based on ecological reasons, like uh, specific trees, and we're gonna cut them down tomorrow uh, for the purposes we chose them. <laughs> I would say that we have 40% of acres biomass here because during 50 years no one did anything. But that means that in order to have a healthy, stable forest, we should remove a lot of trees. Trees doesn't have names, but they have GPS address. So we have a georeferenciation of the tree, and then every tree is unique. Amazing yellow. It's my yellow. We are selling this. Yeah, those are for sale. You don't think that's like a tree? I think that's no. 31. 31 and 39. So when we cut the tree, we paint the, one of the sides because when we slice it down, we keep the origin of the tree in every part of it. This project is really about understanding materials and where they come from. We have two kinds of wood in this forest. We have pine and oak. They have different purposes and different advantages. The pine is soft and workable and works in tension. We can use it for our primary structure easily with these large beams. We also need to remove it from the forest for the health of the forest. We know this from the pile, but look, here's one. The oak, however, is very hard and dense and works well as a skin and protects our structure from all the elements. Together they form a system and give us a whole building. We harvested different trees for different reasons, partly based on where they were in the forest, in the ecosystem, and how their removal would affect the surroundings, but also because of their use. We have some trees that were smaller and shorter and not as regular, and they got cut into small pieces that can be used for surfaces like shelves and flooring. Other trees that were very mature, straight, and large, they could be used for pieces like beams, like this, that form an entire building. Then of course we have those in between, that can form all kinds of diverse things, like tables, or walls, or substructure. Because that's the compost that we're using for the kitchen, and it makes a mix first, and then you have to have an opening here for all the water to go out. The toilet is a composting toilet, that is, it does all the process with worms. It's a diverting toilet. So we extract all the humus every three years and then the urine goes in the grey water system and it gets straight uh, in the garden. So when we talk about advanced ecological buildings as we're designing here, it's not just about a building that isn't connected to urban systems, that's self-sustainable. Uh, but it has to be this liquid, otherwise the worms uh, will die. It's also about a building that works with ecosystems and improves ecosystems. By harvesting the pine, we're improving the health of the oak forest here. We're working in this systematic way, both within the systems within the building and without the building, its relationship to nature. Welcome to the carpentry where we make shingles with the roble. We cut the roble this winter in the forest. We make it into slices. We glue it together. We clean it up. We make shingles. Shingles. We want shingles. Oh.
There are many American houses using shingles, but because the designer was doing a more like a bulb, like a parametric form, and that's why the shingles are, most of them are different. There are many sizes of shingles. I just think it's great how um, personalized everything can be with this kind of construction. You just don't have to build the same way. Yeah, this is like the new cars. I mean, you order the car and they personalize for you. We think industrialization doesn't mean repetition. The new parametric industrialization is about personalized construction, and this is what we try to do here. This is uh, also called the Samba Stairs. It seems that you are dancing. This is a way where you have a normal step, but in a shorter space. And then with this, we had a curvy outside and we have a more simple inside. And in between the two layers, we have here the water storage. Over there, we have the batteries of the building. So this is like a, a double layer. Inside is more square, outside is more curvy. But in between, we have all this technology that we need in order to run the house. The water is in that side. We collect all the water coming from the, and then we have like 300 liters of water. And obviously we, do, we did this because we have the right slope, the surface for the solar panel that will take the sun that is coming from the south. So this is a very functional decision. So with these batteries, we can store the energy for four days, uh, the energy that is coming from the solar panels. This was the easy way to do the heating system because yeah, we have the boot here. Here we have the electrical induction. And we have here the water and the toilet here, and the shower and everything. The toilet separates the liquids and the solid. We don't have water, we have warm composting, and that's why we don't need to be connected to the network. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. We have a fridge. Yeah. But yeah. That's... Electric is connected with this, that are the batteries. And then everything here produces the electricity for the light and the fridge, and also for the for the kitchen. The good news is that the housing in the future should be like this. Buildings should produce their own energy. We should reuse the water to produce nature. And then we should use wood from our boots everywhere in order to produce the material. To destroy a mountain to produce concrete to make a building doesn't make sense anymore. We need to think how the urbanization of the future will happen. You know, the digital world has created the structure in order that we build on top of it the ecological world that is coming. Yeah, this is the CNC, so the machine is cutting. You know, in the 19th century, the new material was steel. In the 20th century, it was concrete. 21st century will be about wood. Wood, we used to use in the past, but there is a new way to use the wood because a wood is a renewable material that grows with the sun. And then there are many new projects connected with wood construction. You know, urban buildings made with wood that produce energy, produce food, etc. So this is the buildings of the future. Uh, to have both the passive side of the buildings and the more productive side of the buildings, using green roof. And this one, for example, I mean, the idea of using containers inside some structures. This is an interesting mixture of some commercial areas in the ground floor and some of these metabolic kind of style structure using wood and some modules that can be adaptive. So buildings can be beautiful and interesting and dynamic and so on, even if they are ecological. In the, in the last year, to do an ecological building was to do a normal building with some fucking solar panels in the roof. And now the question is, we need to do really like a tree. You need to be an organic machine.
in the 90s, 20s, with about how building, the new challenge was to use steel or concrete or, or glass and then to do rational. They will say form follows function. <laughs> But now we say, form follow energy. A tree has a million year of evolution. And buildings are only 10,000 years old. So that's why they are not so smart. We need to give more meaning, more content. And if we can produce our energy in our buildings, why we should buy oil from Middle East? All the energy is produced here. All energy? Yeah, all the heating system and the hot water is produced burning our wood. So here, what we do is we take the trunks and then we break in small parts, we make chips. And then here is a silo, all of this, and then the chips are coming from here. They go here. Let me see if now it's burning. Yeah, now it's burning. Oh, the heat. Wow. This is our energy. Uh, so all of this is connecting with the house. So that means that we are self-sufficient about the heating and the hot water with energy the, coming from our boots. Today they talk about the resilience and they talk about what happened when there is a big storm. So in a centralized structure for energy, if the storm hit in the place that is producing energy for the whole city, the whole city will collapse. If you apply the model of internet, that is a distributed model uh, of having many production of energies in many buildings. So one building can somehow stop, can collapse, but the rest will be alive. You're saying you can get wood and you can be self-sufficient, but how, for how many people? I mean you know, our property is small, but we realize that in Catalonia, for example, 65% of the surface are woods. And we really don't make any exploitation. There is no any factory to produce CLT, to produce wood, to make buildings. We are importing wood from the Basque country or from Austria. It doesn't make sense. This is the, the lowest part of a oak tree. With this oak tree, uh, that the other parts are there, we are going to produce something. So this is the roots of 150 years oak tree, and we are still discussing what to do with this precious wood. Guys, we need a piece of wood. But what is more important is this. The ecology is not something to, let's say, to repair what the real economy is destroying. The ecology is the new economy. The real economy, the real transformation will happen when the ecology will be a business for many people. So ecology should not be like the freaky thing that do the freaky people in order to say to the capitalists, you are bad because you are contaminated. No, no. The ecology needs to be the real economy and then the change will happen. You know why we like the future? Because we like the past. We like to think on the time. We, we live in a, we are part of the history of humanity. We come from somewhere and we go to somewhere. This building was built in 1888 by an industrial from Barcelona. But the incredible thing is that it was founded by the monks of the sister order in the year 1150. 
after we have a royal palace from the kings of Catalonia. Later, they were the nobles. Later, they came the industrial that came here. And now there are people doing research and innovation that we live here. You see, this is the facade of the building. They did an extension. But in the restoration, we keep part of the historical thing. There was here a small chapel with an Ave Maria. And now we have an elevator. It's a fast way to go to the sky. We like to deal with the history. And that's why we like the future. Let's go downstairs. So there's some overlap. You know, I, we were dealing with digital cities 20 years ago. Smart cities has been a way that companies are trying to sell technologies that many cities don't need. And what we realize is that the good thing about the digital world is that it has created the wires for the world to come. But the world to come will be not the digital world. The world to come should be or the bio cities and the more ecological cities or the full destruction. And the digital by itself doesn't mean anything. This is what is important. We are giving meaning to the technology through ecology and through innovation. This is an experiment a student did last year in order to produce energy. So we are building an oven because in the future we'll produce also our own bricks. And with our bricks, we'll do an extension of the house using parametric bolts. We take the water from here, we take the earth from here, and we take the wood from here. So everything is coming from here. We make bricks, we'll do a construction using our own bricks. But then here, every student has one plot and they produce food. All of these used to be farming area. And then over there, there was a factory of bricks because the owner built that factory in order to make the bricks to make the walls. We found, we found some old walls down at the bottom. So the people here, they, they make their brick factory to produce bricks to make these walls and to make uh, the mines. <laughs> if we are able to understand how this was created, we will imagine that the future will be different. So this is, uh, there's something through there or something? Oh, I thought you meant like an animal. So conservative means to try to protect things. But the best way to protect the heritage is to increase it. This is flat because there is a wall. So that's why we like to think on what we can do else. What is the new generation? What the person that was here doing that will be doing today? And this is what we are doing today. We are trying really to imagine the future. When you think about the future, there are many features, and then there are many ways to have good inspirations. But you know, this is not about being isolated because we want to be isolated. No, no, we want to have a deep influence in the future of cities. Here we are trying to learn and to manage the nature in order to transform the cities.